Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's, uh, it, it started off as a... Yes, you go to blockchain.info, you type in your address and it'll tell you exactly everything that's on that address. Yeah, more you do the other half, it's just going to talk back. Yeah, so... Oh, thanks, mate. Looks like I'm the only one eating. Don't mind me, guys. Is that paid for with that coin? Oh, yes. <laughs> oh, I've got an iPhone, right? So I've never had a wallet. I've got a wallet on this day, so I'll make it up. So this is us. This is our third meetup here, right? Yeah. Is that right? Yeah. I didn't mean for this to be official. Everyone's gone on quiet. I'm just telling the I'm just telling the YouTubers. So as you know, my signature style is to make shit up as I go along. Um, so I just bought um, some fancy new kit, this uh, new Yeti microphone, and an, H, an HD camera, which is what's coming to you. So um, I've just gone live, just hit the button, just went for it, and we're all here at the Office of Blue. Oh, yeah. Hey, everyone say hey! There's actually quite a few here. How many have we got? You reckon like three, four, five, six, seven, eight, ten, eleven, twelve, 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 a plus bar stuff. Fifteen. So pretty much jam packs. I mean, we're, we're <laughs> um, definitely competing with Bitcoin. So later on, hopefully, we're going to be showing you a Feathercoin payment in the pub, and also, hopefully, if we get it to work, is the new Reddit exchange, which allows you to buy and sell Feathercoins for local currency over Reddit, much the same way that you do on local Bitcoins. We spoke to some developers from Germany recently, or one guy from Germany, the other guy from Canada, who just done this. They didn't tell us they were doing it, they just did it, came into the forum and said, we've done it, and we were like, brilliant, that's fantastic. So we want to try it out later. I have rehearsed this, but I've only rehearsed it once, so <laughs> who knows what will happen. It'll either work or it won't work, uh, but hopefully that's going to be released next week, um, so we're going to give that a try. So excuse us if the, if the video sort of drops drops in and out now and again. Um, I might need to, to cancel it just to move the camera movement around. Um, but uh, yeah, I hope you get to enjoy the conversation. I'm going to pop the microphone on the table. Uh, give us your feedback on the chat room as well um, in case the volume levels aren't quite right. I'll, I'll do my best to check that. Um, cool. cool. Knock yourselves out, everyone. Thank you for being here. Thank you for coming, everyone. Thank you for inviting us. Oh, very good. Yeah. Quite Everyone. <laughs> Nobody else <laughs> <wants to. laughs> I'll just uh, take the camera and just show you around the room. Come on. 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 Come Blankets, blankets, and as carry on as you are. Nice and natural, because it is <laughs> yeah. so natural. <laughs> 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 
Selling your course? Yes, yeah, yes, yeah, selling. Yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. How much? Uh, it's ten pounds or equivalent of thirty coins for the wallet, or yeah. five pounds for the coin. I know they're quite expensive for a minute, but I can only make a small amount. Okay. Um. Yeah, I'll have one. How would you like to pay? Um. Sign in that balance, please. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's a thirty <laughs> rare. <laughs> I just, I just bought my beer with celery oh, did you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. Number three, you got the third coin produced. Okay, thank you. Yeah, they got a number, doesn't it? Uh, so, how much was it? Ten Yeah, okay. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Yeah. That's a really classy one. Yeah. 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 Yeah, on the first of the coin. Second. Looks like this. Okay. Wait, so I have a question just about the like, uh, here for like, so you will do it on an Apple device. There's, there's, there's no one available for a device. There are for Android, uh, not one for Apple, so I'm happy to buy a kit. I've got a remote cache to my laptop at home, so I'm going to log into my wallet at home and then send the coins out. I see. And could, could I physically, like, bring my laptop here and do it? Yeah, yeah, there's, no reason, there's no reason why not. Oh. Okay. Uh, yeah, the only, the only issue I have is that is, uh, laptop have yes. a laptop card. Yes, I want to type with your. 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 Yes, I yeah, this is the best way you can do it. Yeah, they're correct. They're correct. But the 
just true. Uh, it's much better than there, long ago. No, we can't. Is it just like the Is it just like the for whatever reason, I don't know, that's Apple in there. They yeah, it's no wisdom. They stop. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. that's someone you can work on actually I I I Yeah, 
Yeah. 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 Yeah
Now, so how how would you? Uh, sorry. Do you know about that? That's 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 because it, okay, I guess, so can you do it on home com computers easier because it's memory based and not, and not something like, yeah, it's computational but it is the amount of hardware you need for the coins. Yeah, right, right. Yeah, they would work with the one. Now they are, because it's not the competition. Right, right. It's not a wide enough lens. We're going to have to switch. So, I had this idea of what I mean, the thing is, we're doing a futures exchange. You know, my question would be is it so the way it will work is too late. The speculators have come in at the beginning of the day for a big specified contract for a term inspired at the end of the day, where they agreed to buy 100 fellow clients for a fixed price in the of local currency. And then that way, the merchants, when they started their business at the opening of the day, knew would know what price they would get at the end of the day. And then they just exercise that at the end of the day. Yeah, but I mean, but I mean what I'm saying the is the yeah. point of the platform is that to okay, this you're talking about mining it, just basically it's separate in those trades. Except yeah. Yeah. And yeah. you could also imagine yeah. other possibilities. Because it seems well, like I would be quite a merchant that specifies their tolerance to risk. Like yeah. they could say, well, actually, well, like, actually, you know, yeah. right, right, right. right. Yeah. Cash flows are good right now. I'm not getting a awful lot of customers coming in for better coins. So maybe I'm okay with taking a little bit of risk. I'd rather, you know, go. So maybe give me 20%, 50% coins, better coins, and 50% in your local currency. That so that was, that was what we think. But it's quite involved, it's a lot more work than before, and also there are other companies like Buttercoin and so on, that are already developing stuff like this. So I'm just saying, you know, it's quite to see what the industry does. Um, but that was sort of turned merchants into kind of but in a way that they can understand. So at the end of the day, there's only a very small number of cryptocurrencies. What we have to do with them is we're aware of them from large institutions. So I say, Make sure that doesn't hold that camera. Okay. It's working? Cool. So, so what's your name? So again, remind me. Sorry, uh, Dave Shepherdson. Okay, Dave. Yeah. <laughs> so tell, tell, so you work, tell me who you work for again. Um, we work for City Council. Cool. So I'm the financial inclusion officer. Mm -hmm. So part of my job is to try and help people on low incomes maximize the amount of money they've got okay. in back pocket. Cool. And then help them spend it once it's there to inform decisions. Yeah. So we was sort of. The least have asked me to um, do some research into Bitcoin and what potential there might be in there as, in terms of an alternative currency for the city. Because mm -hmm. there's a desire to see a, a whole pound politically. It's quite politically. Yeah. Um, but we wanted to have a look at is there any sort of different way that we could do it? And essentially, once I started researching into Bitcoin, and it became apparent that if we could develop 
the capacity to mine and a lot of our products are the biggest that's behaving on the planet. Mm. We can then create a value framework from the distribution of that with trusted nets, but some internal within the local authority, some with partners, be it charitable organisations, community centres, uh, children's centres, even like academies, mm -hmm. uh, schools and academies. Um, and then basically, we I mean, the initial plan was £90,000, which we had a rough and ready back of a fag packet, <laughs> would generate around £750,000. Okay. The idea would be that we would generate something, we would brand it as a local currency, so like a whole coin, but it would be a basket of digital currency, so that's the coin like for. Okay. In the initial phase, it's a script based coin, which is the bottom left. So it'd be like. Um, that's, that's true, that's true. Yeah. Your money is your digital currency. But when you're giving them. So when you're giving them to potential users, would it be just something that you pass through the QR code onto their phone? Or um, if, if they had a. I mean, obviously, the idea would be to, to put this in that. In the hands of people on low income, yeah. so they might not have smartphones. So essentially, it would be almost like a voucher system where we would provide um, the wallet. So like a paper wallet. Yeah, like a paper okay, wallet. So and then they will issue guidance. So you just give them. Yeah. If you've got the budget system, happy to accept yeah. that, then they basically just take it in, take it in with X amount. Of set it up, load it up. Take one to a central wallet, which is how bad it is. Authority. Obviously, we know the list of merchants, the agreed price. So the the example that I often um, use and who was signed up to it is always um, the food bank. Yeah. So someone presents themselves at the food bank to get three bags of shopping, you know, three bags of food for free. We would then issue them with a wallet code, which would allow them to be able to cash in at a community cafe in their local area entitled to three free hot meals. So through the, so through the distribution of the local currency, attaining three bags of food, three bags of food and three cheese hot meals. Then essentially that community cafe would hold that currency. We would monitor the exchange rate of the particular variety we develop. When we feel as though that's an optimum rate, we would call for an amnesty from all the merchants. Okay. So you're using it as a, yeah, like you say, a token system. Yeah. And you're leveraging the fact there's already a network there that enforces that so that people can't cheat it. Is that right? Is that the incentive for you? Yeah. So actually, we're much more interested in the smaller. Currencies, not essentially Bitcoin, because Bitcoin people you mean, go to the internet, so obviously now they hoard it, so they're not using it as a currency. Yeah. So, All the you know, main the ways of using it. Yeah. By utilizing some of the smaller currencies, you can actually take kind account of poverty work because you. Yeah, kind of limited. To and I don't know if you know, but we do actually have like an SMS wallet, although it's uh, not work, not up and running right now. Very interesting. Yeah. Um, the problem, the problem with it is the, the the server costs are quite high, so we didn't have enough volume on the network to warrant it. Um, but yeah, we can introduce you to Mark. And you can talk to him. That that'd be really interesting. I mean, we've. Whereas it was quite difficult when we started, we started looking at this in the summer of the industry, um, and it was quite difficult at that time to write funding applications, charitable funding applications, because of the lack of a regulatory framework. So while was, uh, cryptocurrency was in a, essentially a legal grey area, mm, yeah. it was going to be difficult for something like the big lottery or mm. I mean, comic relief or something like that to be able to sort of say we will invest. Yeah. This scheme, um, since the financial conduct agency feel that it's not money, um, and we are in touch with Todd Robinson, who's a big price. Yeah, um, yeah, I've been meeting with him. And yeah, we got a stay from him. Who was obviously the two Downing Street? He's yeah. Basically, the purpose is that you're looking to, to to use this, and there's no problem. Um, so we've got a bit more confidence. So we've identified about seventy-five thousand pounds worth of external charitable funding, okay. which and what, potentially funding. What would you do about the volatility in the market? 
Um, I mean, this yeah. could be a plus side because then all these very poor people could suddenly become very rich. Very rich, and it's about actually about the ability to put on evidence. Actually, if you look at it, it's about what's happening with the austerity measures that's coming through. It's not only people on the lowest income that get their income squeezed further, but those organisations that tend to support these people are also getting cut. So there's a sort of double, you, you sort of almost creating a complementary economy that underpins. It's not going to solve everything. You well, it also gives them more independence, yeah. and they can then choose to do with that currency what they want. Absolutely. Yeah. And are you worried about the fact that obviously, given it's a cryptocurrency, it's untraceable, you could be giving rise to another economy that could emerge around? Yeah. I mean, the way that. The way, the way that we've approached that is that, I mean, at the moment we've got crisis loans. Someone goes in there crisis loans, they get some money. They can go spend that on drugs and alcohol if they want to. They might turn up and say, I need a fridge, this is after me. They could do it anyway. If anything, it's going to be, if you were to give somebody money, they're more likely to do that than if you're going to give them yeah. cryptocurrency. I think the difference, um, what's interesting, like you said, if you're giving something fiat anyway, they're gonna, they have the option of spending it wherever they want, but if you're actually giving people almost like a voucher system, that, yeah. that where, where they, you spend it in selected, in selected um, merchants, I guess there's some that kind of control over it, but there, like you said, there's nothing to really stop them going online and but then, what, like what you're saying is you can't stop them anyway. Yeah. Yeah, and there probably is obviously an ethical reason why you might not want to, yeah. but we, we wouldn't want to. You are entitled to this amount of cryptocurrency, and and then we've not actually give it that to the individual, but give it to a service provider. So the service provider would know they need to go to us, and that we would then issue. The, 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 yes. So X Y Z is going to come in, and you you can give them X amount of service or problems. Or, yeah, that's right. And we will then pay you direct the merchant direct. Yeah, so that's where control. Yeah. I think I think the classic one is the cuts to legal aid. So we're seeing now that before we had advice services where we were able to get immigration advice, employment related advice for free, we now have to pay. Us. So they're presenting themselves at advice services. An issue instead of then them being told to pay for that service we can issue a certain amount of digital currency which would pay that solicitor to do that to, for that piece of advice that then results in a you know I mean in many cases a successful appeal which then releases real money back into the economy so it's actually like a local currency in that respect yeah. that is keeping things low. what you're actually doing is um, you're their kind of you're kind of backing the digital side of the currency as the council for the area. Yeah. There's a huge amount of added value. Well, the infrastructure around digital currencies, we think it's going to be the future anyway. I think we'll move to all the cashless society. Yeah. Um, so digital wallets. Yeah. So essentially, we're introducing that infrastructure um, but through the people on the lowest incomes. Yeah. We'll be using it. Yeah. Because it's got a huge amount of added value. Yeah. At the most basic level, our vision is to print digital money and give it to the poor. Yeah. So that's what we want to do. And especially in the city that's been hit so massively hard by welfare reform, to benefit system, social services, and you know, it's already probably got economic problems anyway. So, absolutely, yeah. I, I said as soon as I got into this space, in fact, when I first heard about it about two and a half years ago, my friend, I think he was using it for like buying things online, you know, on Silk Road. Yes, yeah. And I had a go at him because I said, look, I didn't know too much about it technically. I knew of it. And I, and I said to him, look, this is the end of money. And this isn't about the, the, the West and, you know, you buying your stuff on Silk Road. This is actually about enabling the poorest people. 
because it's a great level. I mean, it helps everybody out, but it definitely helps the poor. Out. And um, now somebody is uh, called Andreas Antonopoulos. You should look him up. He's um, well. I, I don't think I've ever agreed with anyone as much as I agree with this chap. Okay. He is an absolute genius. He's on Twitter. He's on Twitter, and he he's on Let's Talk Bitcoin the podcast. And he has this great slogan. He says it's about the other six and a half billion. Yeah. Great. Right. Really powerful. And so he's now on a bit of a mission to go around the third world. Now, I'm of the view, I don't really care what country you're in, right? If you're disenfranchised, and, if, and I don't care if you're in you know, an inner city area of the UK, particularly the north, because a lot of people don't understand about the UK, it's mostly London people think of when they think of Britain. They don't think of the rest of the United Kingdom. And so there are levels of poverty around the UK. And really, one of the truisms that hits me quite hard is that the poor are self-sufficient, whereas the rich need that one. So the poor can be rich, but the rich can't be poor. If you give them a tool like this, it really does disrupt them. So I would definitely look into what he's working on. He's traveling around the world at the moment. I'm very much into doing more workshops with uh, local communities. I already do some at the moment in London. Um, but as you can see, we've got this recording equipment. It's still very new to it all. Um, but once we get a little bit more um, okay with it, we'll start. We'll maybe come up to Hull and we'll come and see you. And it's just about teaching people. It's not even about teaching them Feathercoin necessarily. It's about showing them the principles of it. Like if Feathercoin is right for you, then that's great. But if not, that's okay too. Um, we'd still help you set up your own one. Absolutely. I mean, we've got we're planning. We've got something that's called the Banner for the Children Forum, where we've got about we've got different organisations. We're going to essentially launch the principle of local currency. Yeah. Yeah. Possibly get down to anything like that. that yeah, yeah, yeah. So we'll definitely come up and visit. Yeah, come up and visit. Maybe yeah. do a bit of it. Yeah. 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 Well, so so that, that'll have the different children centres, the charities, the organisations. The idea is that we're going to do like a bit of a demonstration yeah. around yeah. once we've got a smartphone, we'll send them some cool stuff, launch the principle of it. Like the NHS, NHS, and will and the public health will. So they will do things like um, reward people, vouchers on or cash. Yeah. Doing things like breastfeeding to until the child is six months or putting some milk in. But they could alternatively and um, reward people in digital currency and and have more effective controls about how that that can be spent. Yeah. So they're 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 quite interested in looking at the, the potential opportunities also. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. so there's a music festival here. We've got music festival here. We're yeah. interested. Yeah, we what would like to would like to end um, sort of have to the venues that we accept digital so if you went in and picked a digital cruise and you get to spend production for example or you know, go to local music yeah. it's about yeah so there's a there's a big there's a big festival that happens around August and the idea is about six to eight week period if you attend some of the local music nights, you'll, you know what I mean, you'll get um, so much of the digital currency, uh, you sort of build it up. So then when you go to the festival, there's a two-tier pricing system on beers and burgers and merchandise. <laughs> where, where, I mean, 20% off. So, I mean, the way that we... We want to introduce the concept to people, about the it's the application of it, which is, is the interesting thing. In terms of the volatility, one of the things that I'm no expert on is by any stretch, but we're, we're looking at um, a 50, like a model which is a 50% crypto, 50% men, men currency which is developed by pub culture, which is a, which is um, it's it's not let's say it's not crypto, but it's not pegged to a traditional currency. It's pegged to what's called a basket commodity, so wheat, gold, carbon, credit, that has a relatively low value but it's incredibly stable. So essentially if we can actually what we'll do is purchase lots of Ben. So you build an so you're hedging so you're hedging. Yeah. So you've got fifty percent 50% crypto is issued with one point. So it's almost like. Yeah, so you've got a basket. Yeah, you've got a basket. So you've got a basket which you can build some security. Is the idea. But I mean, we're going to keep it simple. Yeah, that sounds very good. It sounds very promising as well. 
we have a lot of disabled, we have a lot of disabled people. I would say a lot. I mean, at least a, a handful of disabled people or housebound people on the forum, um, because obviously they have a lot of spare time. They're around the house. They feel a bit lonely, maybe. And so the forum is a place where that's why we put so much time and effort into the community. A lot of people in our industry kind of make fun of us. So they say it's like community coin, and then you know everyone else is at war with the government, right? And this whole movement takes itself incredibly seriously. We're like, well, okay, we're at war with the government, but at least we can have fun with it at the same time. You don't have to take yourself so seriously. Um, so yeah, a lot of people on the forum are, um, you know what I mean? A lot of people on the forum are housebound, or they're on a lot of pain killers and so on and so um, a lot of these people get worried that they're, they're actually creating value you see because by being on the forum making themselves helpful whether it's creating physical feather coins or applying some code on github or their open source um, social network where they can add, add to the code um, they're working technically but the regular economy that tells them they're not good enough to work or tells them it's a gray area and that all these guidelines it turns out they can actually Work in a way that is suit, suits their lifestyle. They work really hard as well. Yeah, and they yeah they work harder than anybody. They do. They they do work. Putting so much time and effort into the forum, in keeping the forum running smoothly, and everything. Yeah, it's really good. And actually, I mean, the people that come out and do that, you know, the people that you say can't get out, and yeah. things like that, but yeah. they do. So it's somewhere for them to go. Yeah, exactly. And they have friends, you know, as well. On, on, on the I mean, our forum, I think it's quite different to Bitcoin Talk. I mean, I don't go on to Bitcoin Talk forum that often, but it's so big. Yeah. It's so big. And, but you're guaranteed to bump into somebody among our forum that you've bumped into before, which I, which I quite like. And we are still quite new, so our forum is still big. I mean, it's, it's, it's big It's big. It's big. It's but you still see it's a lot of people on the yeah. small quality. You do see like the regulars and things like that, and new people. That, some of the people that touch today we've not actually met before. So each week's been quite different, hasn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You get new people each time. Yeah, um, which is. But we still have people that were there before, but can't necessarily make them meet. So, but we see them on the forum on a daily basis and things like that, which is. Which is nice. Oh, cool. Well, thanks for talking to us, David. No, no. Oh, no. Thank, yeah, you. Thank you. Very good. I might, I might come back with the camera a little bit later, on, <laughs> just in case, <laughs> just to keep everybody entertained. I hope, hope you're enjoying it. I hope, I hope the audio is working. I hope everything's working. Okay. Right. Let's turn it on to you. And me. Oh no 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 no. Chris, you know. Let's see. Okay. Hold on to my. I've got to hold on to his microphone. Oh, um, my coins have gone now, by Lisa. Um, my coins have gone now, by the way. My balance, yeah, my balance has gone down. <laughs> Yeah, make sure you talk to make sure you talk to the owner here as well because they get to tell you more about Bitcoin and the merchandise as well. Yeah. Oh, okay, cool. Hi. Hello. How are you doing? Yeah. <laughs> I know. We just talked about it. It was bigger than I expected. But this She's Yeti like, microphone, it didn't look this big on Amazon. Like seriously, it did not look this big. We're, we're live on YouTube, by the way. This is Harriet, which who's out of camera shot. We need to get a wider angle lens. <laughs> six people. It's six people. That's massive. That, that's oh, huge. Know it's like live aid. You. It's like live aid. We, we might well be competing. Uh, well, <laughs> can you put it up on the forum yet? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, you have. Okay. All right. Okay. Um, I'll be back in a minute. Okay. Cool. Leave me here to the YouTubers. Oh yeah. Wait, well, Harriet. <laughs> 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 it's yeah, you came at exactly the wrong moment. Yeah. 
Let's check in comments. So yeah. Well, yeah. did you get it? Oh, oh go on. <laughs> That's not good photography. That's not what it's about. It's about always being ready for the camera. Okay, I'm going to tweet out the live stream now. So it may well get busier on here. We just had an interview. Sit around here. Can I come on the line with me? <laughs> Let's get you in. Cool. So, oh, it's so difficult to control this when you're the other side of it. I am actually a professional photographer. You, most people would not know this <laughs> based on my work. But it is a lot harder to control a camera when you're this side of it. So we had the guys from Whole City Council just come in, and um, they were recommended from CoinDesk. I think David is a journalist who's in our industry. We have so to Harry, it's quite new to, to crypto. So we have a magazine, online magazine called CoinDesk, which is like our version of the mainstream media, except they're obviously alternative. And one of our journalists told Paul, City Council, about Bellacoin. And it was a UK coin, so they could actually meet the developers. And so they came down today to talk to us about setting up their own coin. <laughs> Or, or possibly using feather coins as a way of like helping people on benefits or people that are, um, have uh, special needs, you know, financial needs. And because bitcoins and feather coins are non-reversible, like once that person has it, they're in their control. So you're not giving them something that can, you know, um, go get lost in the system. They can actually redeem those anywhere. So that was quite interesting. That was really interesting. Um, yeah. So how have you been? It's been all right? Yeah. Got blown here. You got blown here? Yeah. Is it pretty windy out there? Yeah. It is? <laughs> Streets covered in twigs. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, nasty. Yeah, but now I'm here. Yeah, good, good. What was that pub up the road you were telling me about? The fir tree. Fir tree. Yeah, a couple of streets that way. Do you think they'll take feather coins? I'm sure they would. You're sure they would? Yeah, well, um, uh, the chap who uh, runs it is also um, runs another pub, I think. So he, I'm sure he'd be interested. He's, he's sort of our age, really nice guy. I could yeah. have a chat with him if you like. Yeah, let's, let's, do, that. let's do that. I'm, I'm thinking of like taking over Oxford first, like with feather coin. Getting it to work like in one town, like as a micro currency, yeah. and then because we're still working, we've got a guy in China who's got like his area, and then you've got we've got a place, a few people in Toronto, for example. And what would be interesting is to find out what all these towns have in common, regardless of the nation state. So what is what like the features that they request? Like we're thinking of speeding up our transactions at the moment at two and a half minutes. So you can send the coins to the pub, and it will go through straight away. Like you'll see it come up, but you don't know it's yours for two and a half minutes. Like you can't confirm it. Someone else could spend it before before you get a chance to, to claim it. But we're thinking of speeding up to sixty seconds. Now bearing in mind a credit card isn't instant. It feels instant because they lie to you when you go online and it says it's gone through. It hasn't really. What's happening is the bank is guaranteeing it and saying, okay, if something goes wrong, we'll just pay it. But that creates an insurance industry, which then gets bloated, which then ends up siphoning off a lot of the, you know. So that's why we have like 2.5%, 3% merchant fees. So part of this movement is all about greasing the wheels and helping people to just transact with each other without actually having to go through these third party payment systems. And that's why I think whole world is so interesting. So Chris, the landlord here, who you're probably going to meet in a minute, um, like he jumped to the chance, like he, he didn't need any persuading. Um, I think 
what happened was we basically said, look, are you interested in taking on Feathercoin? He was already interested in taking Bitcoin, but he kind of, you know, wanted to help out a local, you know, development team. And um, well, the first thing he said was like, oh great, I don't, I don't have to wait for the payment for nine days. You wait nine days with so Visa, and then you might get charged back. You know, someone might come in the next day, regret doing it, and just phone up and say it wasn't me. Report the car stole, card stolen, and just say it wasn't me. And the problem is that the burden on the merchant is then outweighed, unless it's 250 quid or more, it's not worth doing, because he's got to fill out the paperwork, it's not worth it, not the margin. Gosh, does he lose a lot like that? I don't know on an individual basis, but I understand in America it's one in every 180 domestic transactions are fraudulent, um, and internationally I believe it's one in 50, which is a lot higher. Um, so it's, it's very high, I don't know the individual statistics quite clearly, but with a system like this he knows the money's there. We've still got some hurdles to overcome because getting feather coins into pounds is very difficult, um, getting backwards, um, going back the other way buying them as well. So Chris is thinking of setting up a, a local, you know, actually selling feather coins here and then doing promotions like you could come in on a Thursday because it's a quiet day for him and then get a discount for your feather coins and things like that. Um, we've also got some guys in Canada who are making arrangements to make it easier locally in Canada to get hold of feather coins. I can't talk too much about it at the moment. But um, hopefully once those barriers have been eliminated, then it will open up the floodgates. But how do you feel like, as a lay person who's only recently new to it, how does it feel when someone tells Tells you, like I did the other day, that you know we could be in for a, for a collapse of regular currencies. These things, these currencies like Bitcoin, are taking off so quickly. Money is what people say it is. It is a question of the commodity in the. What is the commodity in the market that everyone has the most confidence in and travels the quickest? That's money, really. It's the one that everyone has confidence in. So presumably, if everyone starts jumping on these currencies with full confidence, that undermines the pound, especially since the pound buys you 30% less education. You're among yourself. 30% less education than did in 2009. 25% less of travel. 20% less electricity. How does it feel? Well, it, 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 it seems very exciting. Yes. Okay. Yeah. I wasn't expecting that answer. No. I was expecting scary. No. Does um, it not scare you at all? Well, I don't have a huge amount of money. Oh. So oh, you're okay. I don't have a lot to lose. I don't have. Um, mm. uh, but it also, what I do have is very, very valuable. Yeah. Uh, so I have uh, a six year old yeah. and um, responsibilities. Um, and of course, I want to create a secure life for him. So yeah. I'm hoping. Um, whatever happens, it's not um, it's not people like myself who get squished in the process. Yeah. Uh, well, if anything, this helps. Like this, this, this is bottom up. I mean, this yeah. helps out a little guy for sure. Because yeah. once like you do get through the liquidity issue, like getting it on, getting your money onto an exchange, after that, it's all it's all down. Here. It's all great after that. It's easy. You can buy as little feather coins as you want. You can buy like zero point zero 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 one um, because they're deflationary currencies. Most of them, that one is. Um, it tends to go up as the real value in the economy grows. Um, it doesn't necessarily always go up. It only goes up provided people provide real value. Like um, the guy here has got his physical feather coins, where you can actually—they're not all that size, by the way. That's just for demo purposes. <laughs> those those ones are very large. The ones you guys saw earlier on. Um, no, you get like a small one with a certificate of authenticity, and you can charge up. You can charge it up with coins, and then once you break off the seal to spend them, that's it. That's spent. And that's it. And he's just playing around with some, with some more features to see if he can get it to to work a little bit better. Um, so, provided people like him, we also have feathercoinmarket.com where you can, like eBay style marketplace, exclusive feathercoins, so you can buy and sell stuff over there. So, if people are finding that they've got junk in the, in the attic or just stuff lying around they haven't been bothered, well, feathercoin you might as well. You can just put it up there, leave it up there, and someone buys it, someone buys it. And then, you know, and then hopefully the more people that do that, it's like a virtuous spiral because then the feather coins go up in value as the real economy rises because there's only a fixed amount, only a certain number of produced every day. 
day it's about 150,000 or so. Um, you know what that supply is, whereas with the Bank of England, you don't know like how many they're going to produce. If Mark Carney wakes up, has a bad day, he prints a whole load of more money, and then suddenly your money, well, it's okay because his friends get it first. So they get it. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know what I mean? So his mates do okay. But then it rains inflation on the rest of us, mm. and we don't experience it until several years later, usually when prices start going up. Mm. But it's not that those prices are going up, it's that the pound is going down against those commodities, a lot of which, like the energy ones, for example, we're competing on a global economy. So there are lots of other people around the world competing for the same thing that also have aspiring living standards and will work harder than we will because they've got less to lose than us. And I say us as if we're not all part of the same planet, but that's how it feels to us when we watch state media, where, where you know we have these national channels that talk about the Earth divided up into these imaginary borders. But the fact is, we are all on the same planet, consuming the same resources, and then that drives the price up for the rest of us. The idea of not having a bank. Yeah. It's really appealing. I don't have any faith. I've had, yeah. had experiences of going into my bank and explaining what's happened to my account and, and it's their fault and they don't want to know about it. <laughs> Banks have given me more grief than, than yeah. uh, so that's knowing that they're not they're not getting a slice of pie for doing a bad job. Yeah. Is, um, appeals to me. Yeah. Um, yeah. So that's good. It's good for small businesses and it's good for normal people. And it's well, yeah. I mean, to set up a web shop at the moment, before Shopify came out, it was a real pain to get payment processing mm -hmm. on the website, and you, you paid more fees than a pub like this would. The other thing that we found out from local merchants when we we go around asking. We tend to start at the bottom, so we were going out to market stalls. They said, yeah, we spoke to the bank, but they want us to take £100 a day minimum. And they put all these requirements. And basically, the bank tries to own the business. It pretty much tries a hostile takeover to the point where it's not worth the guy even running the business. Anymore. The reason being is that, of course, money has been digitized. Slowly but surely, over the last 20, 30 years, they've been digitizing cash. And as a result, people don't carry banknotes. It's like the boiling frog analogy. The frog doesn't realize it's cooking until it's too late. And all of a sudden, we realize, oh, there's not as much of this money around. And so that's why you get all these queues at ATMs. Yeah. And market yeah. traders are having to have PDQ machines yeah. on the store because they, they want to make a sale and the person has to walk a long way to get some cash and then it may very well be empty yeah. on a busy Saturday, yeah. Friday in Portobello Road Market and I have experience of this. Oh yeah, of course and you did. Yeah, yeah, that. yeah. I forgot about that. Yeah. Um, and so you take a check, but mm. if you take a check, they walk off into the distance and you, you know, you don't know, you don't know if it's going to um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, So just to pay out, to shut out a bit and have, have that there and then because it's all about persuading the sale. On the spots. Yeah. Um, but a lot of people started having to do that just because I, I imagine it's because of the shortage of cash. Yeah. Uh, well, it is partly because the, the advertising and the marketing steers you towards using cards because they have reward points. So it's more about the way they steer the behavior. They want it to be digital because they can track it. And then, in addition, what you're really doing is you're paying with your privacy. You're, they're paying you that 3% reward points, it's not even that, it's more like 1% reward points. They deliberately make the calculation difficult for you to work out so that it looks like, like nectar points where you get like double points and they inflate the points to make you feel richer than you are. But actually each point's only worth like a penny or whatever, but they say it's like 2,000 points and you feel rich. Yeah. And there's all these subtle, quite pernicious behaviours, calculated, manipulative behaviour. Like if that was a person doing it, you'd call them a psychopath. That's what you'd call them, with no real regard to your welfare other than their own. They do have departments of psychopaths. They have departments of psychopaths. Yeah, absolutely. Working out how yeah, to do this. Yeah, we call them bosses usually. <laughs> <laughs> um, we, we, some point, we put these people in charge. I don't know. I don't know whose idea it was, but either that or they just kind of got there. Um, 
Yeah, this is this is the kind of behaviour. It's the the toll booth economy, as Max Kaiser calls it, um, where you just have this rentier class that just rents off of everyone else, and then you've got the productive class, people like you and me, but like you say, we don't have a lot to lose. And that's why I put so much of my money in this Bitcoin and Feather coins because I mean, pretty much ninety percent of my net worth is now in there, um, and it just happened gradually over time. I just got more and more confidence in it. Every time a bad, every time Fox News report on it and it was slagging it off, I'd buy more. Every time a stupid person said something idiotic about Bitcoin, I bought more. Because that, to me, was more validation that it must be something. Like, if these people are angry at it, what are they angry at? Feathercoin got attacked, like this, like our network got attacked a few times, I kept buying more during the attack. Um, because you don't attack something that is, unless it's a threat. Yeah. Of course you do. You, you see something that scares you, and your knee-jerk reaction is to, is to react. And so I just became more and more curious about it. So, that's, that's, yeah, it, it's scary because, like, my dad, for example, is still very scared of it. He doesn't like talking about it, doesn't like it when I bring it up. Yeah, you can sort of tell. He's very. It disrupts their way of life, you know. Look at look at what the baby boomers have done to us as a generation. Uh, Gen Gen Y, as we talk about this a lot, right yeah. off camera, don't we? Yeah. Um, they've inflated the asset prices. They've pumped up property. You know, they, they, this is the first generation to have two or three homes. You know, just. Just you know, buy to let this buy to let culture, and it pushes young people out of life. It pushes them into this kind of limbo where they can't really live. And if they do, they've got to get a job they don't want. They live at home with the parents, and they don't have time to really discover themselves. I mean, everyone everyone needs their own safety net. Everyone needs to feel comfortable. And for some people, that means having fifty thousand pounds worth of savings. So no, they're not going to give twenty thousand of it to some guy at Foxton's. As a an estate agent here in the UK, are particularly predatory in the way that they do business. You know, they're, they're constantly pushing for you to put down more money on deposit. They're constantly trying to close the deal so that they can drive their sales numbers up. But a lot of people get made homeless not because they can't afford it, because they don't want to afford it. They don't even want to engage in this market full stop because they don't feel like they're a part of it. They don't feel like their interests are represented. And you're just let loose on this pack of wolves. But it's not even like, if this industry was, it, like it is regulated, a lot of people say it's because there's not enough regulation, but it is regulated. It's just it's regulated by people with special interests in ensuring that it works for the incumbents, not for the new entrants. So I, I don't know how much, you know I have this theory of intergenerational discrimination. Do you think I'm, Right on that, or am I wrong? With you? Uh, I think there's a. Well, nobody likes change, do they? I mean, if, if things change, you either have to. I don't know, you have to reassess where you are and whether you can work with it. And a lot of people go, ah, oh. at the moment we're having a, a nightmare. With where we live, we want to extend our house, and we are having a problem with a neighbour who is of a different generation to us and possibly feels threatened yeah. by that change. Um, things have changed a lot. I'm thinking about when I was at university, I had the privilege of going to university. I did come out with a large uh, student loan, and I'm thinking seven years after I was at university, my brother was at university, and he came out with an even bigger one. And so it's changed a lot for, for young people. I had more chances than my six year old would have, for sure, in terms of education, in terms of finding somewhere decent to live um, and finding a, a job which will sustain a certain standard of living, um, it, it's definitely changing for all of us. The thing is, if if, if people who people who have have had privileges, perhaps that that the good stuff that they that came with the generation they were born into, like perhaps the baby boomers, if they were able to walk around in our shoes for this and say, actually, you know, it's a lot harder now. I do I do think back and I do think, well, you know, you came out of an apprenticeship or you came out of a 
uh, the equivalent, and you, you went into the bank and you said, this is what I earn, and you know, can I have my mortgage please, and you went home with your new wife and you got a job. Everyone knew everyone back then. No, everyone knew, problem, your bank part manager is, knew you. Part of this is about relationships at scale, like how do we deal in a global economy where in, in the old days, everyone had a village. Now we're still building. I see this. Then you're bringing up two issues. One is the data is the new oil. But now we're bigger than you know. You've got these big mining companies, Google, Facebook. These are mining companies. These are database-driven, data-driven companies that then put nice shiny front front doors and front front shops on this database. They lure you in. They build a castle. They lure you in. They shut the door behind you and say, right now it's time. To rip you off. Um, they, they say it's free, but it's not really free because you're paying with your most valuable asset at time. You're not getting that back again. It's irreversible. And, and your privacy and your dignity and all of these things. But the point is that the value statement isn't made clear up front. Now, think about what that signifies. That signifies that trust is the most valuable thing we have. Look at how much time and energy and money we spend on just trying to establish whether or not we can trust each other. It's why you have sites like LinkedIn which don't even try to be <coughs> accurate in terms of their data. Because the way they get the data, it's like a shotgun approach. They, they just hoover it up. Yeah, yeah, he's good at UX. Yeah, yeah, she's good at photography. But you're not really being truthful. It's not accurate. But it's not there to be accurate. It's there to give you an excuse. It's there to make it safe for you to hire somebody, mm -hmm. right? It's OK because you know LinkedIn said that they were you know, good at this. You've got someone to blame. You've got someone to wrong. blame. You've got, you've got uh, some kind of accountability mechanism. I think it's very primitive at the moment, the way the reputation systems work. I think that they've yet to become much more distributed. We need uh, open standards on what fields there are. You know what kind of skills there are, because at the moment you could type in designer, graphic designer, they could mean very different things to different people. So that all needs to be codified, and then it needs to be distributed so that you don't just have one platform. And then every time, you know, LinkedIn goes bust, and then we have to re-enter all that data again. Because that's work, you know, tagging is work when you have to type all that stuff in. So um, we don't want to have to, we don't want to have to duplicate all of that. So there's that, there's that issue, but there's also this kind of, and again, Max Kaiser calls this the economics of extinction. That there's almost like, maybe we're getting a bit deep and a bit dark here, but there's almost like a, a strand of our population kind of is, is heading for suicide. It, it's almost trying to kill us off. By starving off the youth, you're starving the most powerful source of all. Because nobody lives forever. Um, and by stopping them from expressing themselves and having their freedom. Do you have a view? Yeah, I do, definitely. I feel like if, if you put um, time and effort into young people, babies, children, and you nurture that, that group of, of our society, when they become our age, they're going to be making really, really good decisions about their personal lives and about their communities. But at the moment, they're trying to shut children's centres, they're trying to, they're just not supporting Who's that. They? Um, the local, local governments, local council are not, are, with people have been fighting in Oxfordshire to try and keep children's centres open. Um, and these are places where most um, people who need a bit of extra help or who just want to be part of a group, um, mums go along and they get that support and they're really, really valuable. And I feel like um, if we can sort out our young as a society and, and get them on the right track, they can strengthen us and look, ultimately look after us, but they can also make really good That's choices good when, when they're our age. And I feel like that they have even less than we had now. That, that group have even less. Yeah. So are they going to be able to, are they just going to, are they going to be able to sort out the mess that, that everything's going to end up in? You know, I just feel that that, that We're really not thinking important. ahead and we're thinking too short term. Yeah. And it's not as if our, your, our generation, yours and mine, can really do a lot about it yet. But that's one of the, the benefits of something like um, Feathercoin or Bitcoin is that there's, there's an open ledger, which means that you could, for example, just set up your own Feathercoin wallet 
could send you know a lot of feather coins to that and then you can actually have little daughter wallets that come off of that and then you can give those out to local people and it's called hierarchical deterministic wallets and so you have one parent wallet and then lots of child wallets underneath and then it's all accountable so you can see where all the money's going so there's a public ledger on the explorer um, which I guess we could look at later on um, and you can just trace all the payments so you know if somebody's siphoning off funds because everything would be blocked. So that's what that could do for you. You could literally start campaigning, raising your own money, and then setting up your own shopping center. And then I think that's why the guys from Hull came down, because they wanted to see, like, maybe this was something they could do. Like, there's a, there's a great saying by Jack Welch. She says, change before you have to. That's what I felt that the Hull were doing, was that they saw this coming. If they don't adopt this, if they don't take the initiative, someone else will, and then they'll be put out of a job. Um, now, what, some of the things that you've been talking a lot about, like trust and community, and I think that in order, I'm, I, as a mum, I can talk about my experience and trying to bring Jack up and his development, and I think that in order to make to create individuals who really value that and are able to interact with each other successfully in personal relationships and um, build trust and, and be useful in the community. I think if you, if you invest time and energy in young people very quickly and make sure they're not failing early on, then you've got a much better chance of um, People looking after their environment, looking after each other, and um, you know, having things like this, which which help everybody, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, it's getting quite busy. We've had a few more people turn up, by the way. Um, I don't know what the sound is like on this thing. Yeah, so this is like you can just hang out and um, chill. We're trying to we're trying to make these meetups a bit more diverse because at the moment it's very male centric, as you may have noticed already. I wanted to bring Jack with me. Today. Oh yeah, cool. Uh, I'm you to oh yeah, I've got I've got um, Jack. So I've made um, for Harriet's son Jack. I made a paper wallet, a Bitcoin paper wallet uh, for Christmas. I made some for my friends as well. Um, so yeah, well, well I can come up some other time and I can show. I'll show it to you in a minute uh, once we go off air. But uh, yeah, but that'd be really good. So any any final thoughts? Um, you put me on the spot. Here. I know. Sorry about that. Yeah, it's too good an opportunity. Yeah. Glad I came along. Yeah, it's really cool. Did you come before? Or did, it's your first time. No, I've been before. Um, and I uh, met a few people last year. <laughs> And uh, yeah, just haven't put my money where my mouth is yet. <laughs> we'll sort out with some feather coins a bit later just, on. I'm not very good with the tech, tech stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah, there's still a lot of work that needs to be done on that. So, uh, yeah. Well, thanks very much, Harriet, for, uh, for <laughs> talking for, to us. Hope the chat. audio's come out okay. We'll check it later on to find out. And um, I will, seven, seven people, I mean, massive audience. No, they, they, people will be able to watch this like indefinitely on the internet. Um, so I'm just going to point the mic at the rest of the table. And so I will be back later on. The people are actually mine. So you're like I am. Yes. Oh, yeah. Well, I'm a control you could get a behavioral So it's a very um, um, Sorry, we want to Because there's a lot of enthusiasm. Also, it's some it's an area which you should kind of well, the, the logistics in terms of predicting where some all these years you take the size of the economy in that coin and divided by the number of coins.
and that, 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 that gives you the value of the coin, you see. So I um, which is what's going to be in it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, uh, I was actually, actually going to do that on a t-shirt. Yeah. 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 How you get yeah, like, how many people are actually uh, okay. okay. uh, Because uh, now it uh, has a body of uh, the uh, 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 There's an enormous amount of enthusiasm in the market. You've got it's the kind of classic situation where you've got kind of Joe Blogs. I used to be a cargo Joe, now I'm not. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> So, um, so I'm kind of just sort of, I don't know, I'm also, I'm, I'm also kind of interested in, in like setting up some kind of business related to it, but I want to find something that's in the world. I wish I had one to go because I don't, I don't think that we can know where it's going. Yeah. Uh, well, I mean, I'm, 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 I'm
a lot of modules that are great to fill out. See. Yeah. So, I mean, obviously, you get a better speed of better optimization. So, I would have thought that you would have been the instrumental in possibly putting them back on together. The, the thing that um, concerns me about web stuff is the security aspect. Because you see a lot of stuff you put together, and then, you know, there's. Broadcasting in HD. I mean, if you don't have you can hire a security expert. Actually, I work for a company called Virus Bulletin, and they produce an editorial about viruses, and they're all. I work for software. Security experts, anyway. Five. So, so, it was it would be fairly easy for me to find something. You could. I mean, I'm not. A, I'm a web guy, not a, not a software yeah. security. Guy. I understand. Um, I could easily be easy for me to find something. You could do that. Yeah. 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 Sorry, didn't mean to improve. No, but I mean, yeah. It's just really interesting. I think something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. I mean, interesting. Yeah. I <laughs> 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 Yeah. 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 That's awesome. yeah. My friend Harry. Yeah. Yeah. That's a bit much. Yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah. Yeah. It's a little bit um, strange. Yeah. Yeah. It's funny because it feels like a moment. Can the coin is more of a currency? Because of its exchange rate, whereas Bitcoin Bitcoin it's going to go up ten times this year. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's interesting to see what will happen when you spend that money. I mean, I think I think there's definitely a there's definitely a problem. Uh, Number two is on the table. I mean, actually, I just don't really trust it. I think it's got a problem. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 There will be. And never just it feels like this this year is critical because it has to be adopted to be used. And then, then it can just supply the the yeah, that's what I mean. I mean, people just say, you know, bigger companies to say, right, we're going to take it. I mean, the design would be, what they would do is, uh, I'm going to say, that would be a big cost. That would be, 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 if the student loans company, the wife of the US would accept it, because that would make transferring money so much easier. Uh, I'll say, but um, uh, because at the moment you have to, even if you have to have an account in the States, because they only take payment from accounts in the States, so you have to keep it in mind. We have to pay for the PayPal set up between our bank and take PayPal money across the system. Bitcoin or some other thing. Well, I'm going to come to this. This is the real PayPal. It's actually a transaction. The fact that you can send money in and you can set it up in any way at all. It's a part of the address of the show. Yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah.
If you are still using the beer current shop, then you still need to get it into the beer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, 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 so you know, so you know, oh, 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 oh
So that is how physical That's how it's called. Yes, but here is your just a just a card in this one and then you have to leave them so that's the card if you look on the back of the card you can tell on the reverse that's because you can't turn it down to the card I that's on my list as well. Paper wallets and things like that. So we feel the Still learning how to do all these things. Yeah, I'm telling you. I'm telling you. Bitcoin is what it's going to Fortunately, I've got one. 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 So, how much are these? Uh, 10 pounds for wallets, 5 pounds for dollars. So, you're seeing you can go to the wallets and those are the no, that's the back. That's how the film shows up. Oh. You have to actually convert it to that. Oh, okay. Yeah, so they basically look like that. So, that telecom has value. Uh, uh, that was decorative one. Oh, okay. that's, that's got no funny coins on it. It's just where you can take coins from. We haven't had all this. It's I <laughs> want <laughs> Yeah. Um, <laughs> 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 I don't the confirmation for that transaction on your phone. Yeah, exactly. So it's gone through the. I've never used it. And then the rest of the system. Well, so I don't know what they're not like anyway. If you receive it, you can probably watch it. Yeah, there's no problem with it. Don't resend the paper. Okay. So 55, yeah. If it's going like that, it's around the end of the year. It's just like that at the moment. So can you see that that's really tight? Yeah, that's really tight. Yeah, that's really tight. I think that's okay. I'm not sure. 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 i not, 
Cool. Yeah. So, um, I'm this one be used for my offline. The thing that really worries me is that you know my wallets reside on a computer or something. So, and it's you know the because sort of, I've got big coins and I've got coins and I've got pepper coins. So, is it accessible on port eighty? No, no, so I guess no. Yeah. Most years, yeah. So that would be putting coins on as, as opposed to taking coins. Uh, the way should, should be able to take off as well. But I'm going to keep the confidentiality. It's, uh, it's still an idea. Uh, I don't want to get too much of it. I've got plans for it. Yeah. Yeah. So one of the reasons I talk about Bitcoin is because the, there was a person like, doing I think this equivalent on Bitcoin in the States. Yeah, yeah there, there, there are there are other wallets. Uh, I mean, there's there's one thing that's actually pressing them. Uh, and one out to Troy Silver and gold actually pressing them. So the second stage is that being more expensive. Certainly, one of them got shut down by the. Six weeks ago, right? Uh, there was some. Uh, I can't remember the way through the Okay, I did read about it on Bitcoin too. So, you know. Yeah. Yeah. But, um, uh, the, uh, it was something about being uh, asked for Bitcoin, isn't it? Money, money transmitters. So, even we've got people that my wife is actually just. Okay. 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 Okay.
Which is doable to put your photo on the main So, yeah, this is a pretty odd image of the stuff with it. Like I say, this is just a bit thick. So, we've got a standard coin. Well, this, this is also my problem in that I get a lot of ideas. My day job is keeping me so busy. I've effectively got my bag so it's like, so you know, because I'm going to be using it there. It's got two graphics cards in, and they've got people building these sort of rigs out of plywood. It would be good to go to the new mountain, that maybe other people would be interested in. Yeah. But sometimes in South Africa, it's all about now, and they've overloaded it all. Yeah. Uh, I've thought about yeah. uh, building custom bricks with an edge light, and so you can just cross the cards, and then you can do it with an edge light. Basically, the light shines. Light shines. Light shines. Light shines through the face of the acrylic, and then the edge just glow bright. Really <laughs> 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 I'm just I'm about people like them. 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 Like You sent me an app that I wrote, which looks absolutely horrendous. Did you do that? No, I, I, I wouldn't release this because you're running, you're running apps at the phone. Well, as I was saying to, to everyone, he was complaining that he didn't know about web. Oh no! Well, what is PHP and all that stuff? Oh, like, uh, no, no, yeah, oh, nice. Nice. Yeah. So, like, <laughs> it's a nice. 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 It's a n
Like, like, well, yeah, I was like, yeah, 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 yeah. So this is just the current status of the, the feather coin. So the back end's done, pulling the data in in JS7 format. But I'm still going through. This is my very first app that I've written. And uh, I've still got to go through all the tutorials about the different text layouts and graphical layouts and things like that. So that's good. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I would not have technically been able to do that. Well, I don't know how to do any basis for the hurricane. That is, I think, five or four gigahertz. You don't say how many machines are in there. Is that a possible number to fear out of If they were equivalent, I know, I, I realize that it would depend on the speed. If we took an average, um, so yeah. how many graphics have you got? How many graphics have you got? That depends on. I mean, <laughs> I've got AMD um, 7970s, and I've got two of them, and I'm going to expand to four. Anybody who's really doing this properly is probably going to have at least four graphics cards. So we're talking about two. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Um, but if you look at the resources, always get mixed up between Bitcoin and Bitcoin. Yeah. Yeah, what's, what's the size? What's the size of the price? Yes, yes. Yeah, well, I know, but I mean, what, what's the number? I mean, what's the ratio? Uh, Divide the network the, size of right. Bitcoin network mining power by that of the Bitcoin network. Yeah. Have you got a pen and paper? And I can tell you. Yeah. Yeah, probably. You don't. You don't carry this on. All right. Hang on. Because <laughs> the current. I've got, I've got a napkin. <laughs> yeah, no one didn't bring a pen. Let me let me just see what my rig's doing. So I'm currently yeah. So one point two eight mega hashes. So I would think an average rig is going to be uh, doing two mega hashes per second. So. Please. So that's killer hashes. So two and a half thousand. That sounds about right. We're talking about two and a half thousand. Five point four. Five thousand four hundred thirty-seven mega hashes. I think. So five or three. That's skewed because of the fact that Bitcoin generally uses basic technology. I'm only I mean, all right. It is. They are. The network hash rate is measured. It's measured in micro If it was the same, if it was in theory. But they were the same machine. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Okay, uh, let me go on to Bitcoin. I'm just interested in the I think there's a page on the difficulty which tells us the current. <laughs> 17 giga hashes per second, so that's 17 thousand. 17 tetra hashes per second, 17 thousand giga hashes per second. 
And this is yeah. I could be wrong about this because yeah. Bitcoin's yeah. network is yeah. 3,400 yeah. times bigger yeah. than yeah. other yeah. yeah. Because of the fact it's yeah. the script yeah. now, yeah. currently, yeah. Um, you know, don't have any ASICs for yeah. that's skewing everything. one of them I can now because it's getting replaced. Where did you get it? For the original. Yeah, I'll put Sapphire. Yeah, I'll put Sapphire. 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 I'll put
Yeah, because I'm um, now I'm in the office, my own conditioning office. So I can suddenly, and then we're So I can suddenly pull my kids out and the temperature's going from like 88 degrees down to, you know, the second one. I So I was kind of actively managing it every few hours. No, not not straight away. Yeah, well, we're not going to be able to do that. Yeah, well, we're not going to be able to do that. Yeah, well, we're not going to be able to do that. Yeah, well, we're not going to be able to do that. Yeah, well, we're not going to be able to do that. Yeah, well, we're not
and I remember yeah, all the class, class, did you do class with class? No, 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 no. No well, uh, Fortunately, because at the time I wasn't sure I was going to do that, as part of my company, or at least personally, I um, did it on a personal trip on one, so I did it after about, I think I waited until about October. No, no, it was all August, wasn't it? Um, and then this is another day the deadline, so then I just initiated the charge. So I had to go through the old um, pay through PayPal, so PayPal was a Never actually the shit. Yeah, I mean, that's what we're trying to do. It's a gold rush. I just don't think these are any I've not gone into them because I don't see how you can make because you kind of chase it at the time. And if you're not, you've got a gamble, you know, you've got these new companies saying we've got two terahash miners. Okay, I've got a pre order. I'm essentially putting my money in a casino and gambling so they're going to be first. Because if they're not, you'll be struggling to make your money. So it would be interesting to see what happens. Well, wouldn't, it, wouldn't it not be worth uh, pointing out basic miners that uh, one of the best examples? Um, was a text last time. Sure. And then we're going then, and then convert home to the trades on most of the exchanges. Just convert straight to Bitcoin. Sure, that's all right. I've only looked at one of the websites. It's a multi. And it tends to be like number one. At the moment, it seems to be the most profitable all the time. But one of them did overtake us for a while. But we're not talking, you know, if you look at mining, old points, you're talking about 38 times, whereas you're only talking about 30 percent You read anything about this 42 points? I think it's very, 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 well, that's one point where voice work went to the cards. It's a very point where one thousand dollars. It's only going to be four to two years created. It's the whole network where you know, you can find a single point payout. I know it's. It's a different take. Well, I mean, this does seem to be a bit of an explosion. It's, 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 who do you think of Who do you choose? It's a coin that's got most people behind it. The most the stock market out the most money. So, what we want to is to push away the coin into the market. We need to do what I did in the box call. Yeah, it's what somebody like Profile. I can make a box ring. Oh, that's what I'm talking about. It's a very doubted box ring. It's probably priced on the crypto exchange. It's based on the stock.
Is this on the, the meetup thread? Um, no, it's just a new one that Chris has set up to meet up. Oh, yeah, it's just part of that. Not the Dropbox. No. Oh, I'm I was supposed to text the link to my friends and he must be French or she. I guess. Tell it, tell it, tell it. Tell it. All donations welcome. Well, then there was that student, wasn't there, or something on the space? Well, there was, there was a, a Bitcoin is like in America. had a t shirt on it, and he had a sign that says, Please don't send Bitcoin. And he had his address on the t shirt. I think he raised about $16,000. Yeah, dollars so probably $16,000. So just, just, just on the TV. Right. The wild west. Crazy, crazy. The problem is that what they've done is they've got some of those solutions. So obviously, they take the piece. Yeah, they don't get the size. Well, there's a couple of stories about people that have been on that crime by Kia. Yeah. So that's oh, now, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 Ye
Oh yeah, it's just going back Yeah, Oh yes, I could get it. Yeah, it's picking the crack by it's I just I I've got a trade I tend to lose all the games. So Ruth, do you want to sit with me a sec? Yeah, I've got a lot of fun, it's about to turn it back on again. Well, I might say goodbye. Okay. Yes, you know. It's the light light. Great. Uh, it is terrible light lighting in here. That looks a bit loud. So, have you enjoyed yourself? Yep. You really? Yeah. What were you doing back there? Anyway, just then when you were when I was recording you. Talking. Talking. Yeah. About the physical coins. Of course. Did we? Oh, we haven't like um. We might have to come back because we might have to like film like an actual transaction. That'd people, be really cool. People have been using feather coins. Yeah, everybody actually. George, George told me earlier that in fact somebody had come in three weeks ago to this bar just to spend feather coins. They'd they came come in all the way from London. Yeah. Which is pretty amazing. That is pretty cool. Just for just for the facts of that, and um, we had the guys from Hull City Council, uh, the guys from Amsterdam. We were talking to. I was talking to them off camera just now. Uh, one guy I spoke to was a scientist, and he felt that cryptocurrency could be a really useful tool for raising funding for scientific projects, which is something I hadn't really considered before. So yeah, there's a lot of things going on. So yeah, I just want to say uh, thanks all for tuning in. Um, I'm going to say goodbye now because this has been going on for some time um, and we might be back later. Just stay tuned to the forums and thanks for joining us. Cool. Thank you. Thank you and very we'll much. Catch you later. Cheers.